Number 12. What can we as a society do to help? As a society, we have moved on, especially as mentioned earlier with the Suicide Act in 1961, where suicide was no longer seen as a crime. However, we still have a long way to go. There's so much we can do. We can look at our own behaviours about how we speak or don't speak about mental health and suicide. The silence is a massive part of the problem. With a recent case of suicide, a cousin of the person who died commented, we didn't know there was anything wrong. Why didn't he speak to us? I asked the person, in looking at the people around him, were they open to talk about feelings and struggles? And her answer was no. That can give the outward message that we don't talk about that sort of thing. This can encourage people to continue to bottle things up and hence becomes part of the problem. One of the reasons why I wanted to produce this show about suicide is because if someone is murdered, an inquest is done. But if someone dies by suicide, there is a coroner's inquest generally, but the cause of the suicide act cannot be definitively decided then most times it's brushed under the carpet and never spoken about. <laughs> well, we need to break the silence and explore why people are dying by suicide so it doesn't keep happening. As a society today, we can look at our attitudes and beliefs towards showing and talking about emotions. For some people, they have learned and been conditioned not to talk about their feelings. Saying things like pull yourself together and keep a stiff upper lip are all part of that conditioning. Showing emotion in the past was seen as a weakness when actually it takes great strength to be comfortable with your own vulnerability. We can learn that telling someone to don't cry or just snap out of it is not helpful. We can learn to say things like do cry let it out. Take as much time as you need. We can get through this together. We can model behaviours that talk about feelings and emotions. I've heard people say, oh, we don't talk about that pink fluffy stuff. Well, choosing not to talk about feelings is killing people. And that's the reality. Oh, sorry, folks. I'm just so passionate about this. I spent the last 10 years working as a counsellor and I see the detrimental effect. Is this what we want for our future children? To feel worthless and not heard? You know something, I talk about that vulnerability. I had, um, it was recently, I was upset about something and a person turned around to me and said to me, you're not crying, are you? I thought you were stronger than that. And I said to them, do you see this? I said, this is what makes me strong because I'm not afraid to be vulnerable and I'm not folks. And you know what? I'm really sick of hearing people say, you know, after somebody's died by suicide, oh, they were the life and soul of the party. We didn't know anything. Come on, folks. Surely we got to be asking ourselves, why is that happening? Why did that person feel like that they couldn't speak to their own family, their own friends? What are we doing as a society that's preventing people in talking about their feelings of being vulnerable? I had a client who was happy for me to share this, who says to her children at the end of the day, tell me a time when you felt sad today, or can you tell me a time when you felt angry, or a time when you felt happy? This is an example of normalizing talking about emotions. For years, people have been carrying anger as their main way to communicate, when behind anger is sadness, fear, loss, hurt, or pain. We can be open-minded and ready to learn about why people get to the point where they have suicidal thoughts. Be open to talk about it. The fact that you're watching this video means that you're taking action and being open-minded, thank you. Whether you are the person suffering or want to help someone who is or both or neither, well done in watching this and taking action. 
we can stop saying that people commit suicide as the word commit makes it sound like that they have committed a crime. We can change this by changing the language we use by saying somebody survived an attempt or died by suicide. What we can also do is stop blaming and judging someone for taking their own life and understand why it happened. What if that person died by suicide as a result of a crime, like being in an abusive relationship that led to their suicide? What if the people within that relationship did not know they were being abusive? This happens. We need to learn from the past, not sweep it under the carpet. Not to blame someone, but to understand the different circumstances to why this is happening and what we can do differently. We can show compassion for each other. We can understand that most people come from good intentions and may not have learned how to talk about emotions. As a counsellor, I've learned that most people want to show emotional love, but sometimes they don't know how to. Folks, it takes practice, <laughs> like everything else if you're not used to doing it, but you can learn how to do it. The fact is, is that most people at some stage in their life will struggle with their mental health and that's normal. And you know what we can do? We can let go of this pressure that we have to pretend to be happy all the time because this is not realistic. Think about it, folks. A typical conversation tends to go like this. How are you? And the person goes, I'm fine, with a smile. And then they go back, and how are you? And then the person replies, I'm fine, with another big smile again. And sometimes we say we're fine and happy 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> when someone says to me, how are you? I say, I'm shite. That's if I'm having a bad day. But you know what happens? The other person will say, do you know what? I'm a bit shy too. And you know what we do? We have a laugh. We get over it. We let go of that pressure to be happy all the time. Look, folks, as human beings, we are all the same. We have the capacity to learn. And together, we can break the stigma and save lives. As I mentioned earlier on at the start, if you've experienced something helpful that may be of help to others, then please share it in the comments and let's continue to help each other. Thank you so much for watching this.